In this lesson, we're looking at population growth rate, change, and dynamics. So there's quite a few points here, and it will be in two parts. All right, there are many things that influence a species population size, both abiotic and biotic, and these will in turn change and limit the carrying capacity for that species and result in different numbers of individual organisms in that population. So calculating population size is really challenging due to the constant fluctuations in population size, but also the logistics of actually counting live organisms. Now, we calculate population growth rate using four considerations. We talk about births, we talk about deaths, we talk about immigration and emigration. So immigration is the movement into a location, emigration is the movement out of a location. So obviously, you know, if we've got more births and more organisms immigrating, we're going to have a higher growth rate. If we have more deaths and emigration, then the population is going into decline. Right, so the formula that we use is the births plus the immigration take away the number of deaths plus the number of emigration, okay? And that's going to give us our population growth rate per a certain period of time, right? We need generally a number per year because for a rate, it needs to have a time period. So if we do an example of this, let's talk about a population of a thousand individuals where a hundred are born in that year, 65 immigrate in, 37 die, 25 emigrate. So obviously our rate per year or our numbers per year, our growth rate per year is going to equal the 100 that are born plus the 65 that emigrate, take away the 37 who die plus the 20, ooh, yeah, 25 that emigrate. So, you know, we get 165, take 62, which is 103 individual organisms per year. Now, if this is a positive number, and it is, it's 103, it does mean that we are increasing in population. Obviously, a negative growth rate indicates a declining population. So this can also be expressed, expressed in numbers of unit per time, like per year, or as a percentage increase. So we could then find out that 103 over a hundred uh, over a thousand individuals you know we can find our percentage from that here's another example we've got a group of bison we want to calculate the growth rate and we want to calculate the original popul if the original population size was 54 what is the new population after two years so if we start off we've got 24 calves so our rate will be the 24 calves we've got 13 deaths so that's going to need to go into our second brackets 13 deaths 17 immigrate, so we add them into the additions and we are adding in one emigration, so that's not too many. What have we got? We've got 41, take 14, which is going to give us a 27, so this is positive, which means the population is in incline, it's getting bigger. So this is our growth rate, it would be 27 organisms or animals per year, 27 bison per year. Now, if we had a look at the, if the original population size was 54, then we can say, all right, well, if original was 54, we are adding 27 each year. So therefore in two years, we are adding 27 new individuals times two, which is gonna be another 54, which means actually our population is doubling in two years. If the original size is 54, and we are adding another 54. And now keep in mind, these are really theoretical. Obviously there's going to be so many factors that are going to influence the actual population size there. Now, measuring and estimating population size we've talked about is really challenging. The logistics of doing this, considering organism movement, they're hiding in their habitats, you know, and a method of counting we need to use as scientists that are not intrusive or dangerous to the scientists. You know, habitats might also be really inaccessible. So scientists take samples of populations to make educated estimates of the population size. So you might see that they tag birds. You might see that they set these kind of little traps and, you know, this is a pitfall trap there as well.